The add-on at checkout and post-delivery for full self-driving on your Tesla currently is $7,000 at the time of recording this, and there's no immediate plans on raising it, but Tesla does make it very clear on their website, as did Elon at the Investor Autonomy Day, that the price of full self-driving is going to increase, which is sad, but at the end of the day, the reason they say it's going to increase is because right now there's definitely a lot of doubt, and full self-driving is not really out yet. All we really have are driving assist features like autopilot and navigate on autopilot but when it comes to full-on just taking control of the car and getting you all the way from point A to point B with very little involvement that's still not a thing so Tesla is basically considering it an early access discount that hey if you want to order full self-driving right now we're not gonna charge as much but the primary reason that they're saying that full self-driving has to increase in price is Tesla's that do have this full self-driving option will be compatible with the robo taxi ride ride sharing service, which for those of you who don't know basically is the idea that once level 5 autonomy is achieved, again, probably not going to be anytime soon. It's going to take a few more years, potentially till the end of this decade before that's legally ready. But once that's achieved, you'll be able to take any Tesla that is compatible and basically flip a switch in it and opt it into the robo taxi network. It will be able to leave your house, go drive people around just like an Uber or a Lyft driver, except this time there's no driver in it, Tesla will get a small fee out of that ride sharing service and you will get paid just essentially to let your car drive other people around. Are there lots of issues with this concept? Yes, absolutely. There's a million questions we could dive into, but the main one I wanted to talk about today is why I think Tesla actually should separate the tier options for their Teslas from full self-driving capability to robo taxi access. Right now they're one and the same. Any car that has full self-driving right now is technically compatible compatible with RoboTaxi once that day comes. You don't need to buy anything else to be opted in, basically it just means your car is capable of driving itself, but obviously Tesla's argument for charging more for full self-driving is that, hey, even if full self-driving at checkout costs you 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars for yes, no hardware involved at all, literally just a software upgrade. The thing is, with that upgrade, you're gonna be able to let your car go out and drive other people around and actually make you money, which at the autonomy day, they said could make you $30,000 a year potentially, and that would be a pretty amazing passive revenue service, you can imagine. There would be lots of people out there that may not even be big fans of Tesla, but seriously just want a good source of passive income, and the fact that this could be one of the first cars ever that you can just buy and then let it drive itself around and pick people up and make you money while you do whatever you want. You stay at home, relax, or go to your job and just let this be a little fun passive income while you're at it. Again, there's gonna be a lot of issues before we get to where we are now and when RoboTaxi is actually possible, but I think you can warrant that super high fifteen dollars to $20,000 add-on if you're making the argument that this is gonna be part of the RoboTaxi fleet. So that initial fee to enter Tesla's program is, I think, where they can make a lot of money because you're probably gonna get a lot of people that wanna buy up five, ten, and Teslas, opt them all into the robo taxi network so that you can basically have a bunch of passive income every single year and every single day. All you pretty much have to do is clean up the car, make sure no one barfed in them, and plug them all in and make sure they're charged and ready to go for the following day. The robo taxi access, I think it makes perfect sense for that to cost so much as it is. But I also think there's a ton of people out there, likely some of you who are Tesla owners, that are very much in your honeymoon phase, so to speak, or maybe you're always going to be in that honeymoon phase where you're like, you know what, this is my car car, I paid a lot of money for this, or I'm paying a lot of money for this, I want to make sure it's well kept, and I use it a lot, I'm not opting into RoboTaxi, you know, I don't need passive income that bad, and I don't know if I'd ever feel comfortable, even in a perfect world, of my car going off all by itself, and just strangers I don't even know, driving around inside it, I totally get that, to be honest with you, I don't even think I would opt my Tesla into the RoboTaxi network, just out of fear of strangers getting inside my car, and messing it up, and me having to clean it up, and that kind of thing, even though I'm sure RoboTaxi could have some type of, you know, cleaning fee if someone happened to ride in your car. It does have that interior camera that you could access and be like, hey, they made a mess, so I'm gonna charge them extra. Even with that, I just don't want to deal with it, and I think I would prefer knowing where my car is at all times, and just knowing that it's under my jurisdiction would make me feel much more comfortable, but to those people out there that want to use the Teslas in the RoboTaxi fleet as a form of passive income, sure, they can pay that extra fee, but if you're like me, who wouldn't want to do that, still allow that add-on 
for full self-driving because I'm totally on board with the idea of just getting in my car and it pulling out of the garage, driving where I tell it to go, and I have to do very little on my part to make the car do that. It can handle the steering, the acceleration, reading stop signs and traffic lights, stopping for pedestrians and all that stuff. I'm totally on board with the full self-driving thing. I would take advantage of that every single time I got in the car, but I think potential confusion for future customers is that in order to access full self-driving, you also have to opt in for the robo-taxi network, and because that's a source of revenue, Tesla's gonna charge big bucks up front because they're saying, hey, I mean, you're gonna make that money back anyway, right? It's gonna be a $30,000 a year gig for robo-taxi, so who cares if it's $20,000 at the door? You're gonna make all that back. Well, some of us just want the tech for ourselves, and we're selfish, and we're not gonna opt in for robo-taxi. So that's my suggestion in today's video because I'm sure Elon Musk diligently watches every single video I publish. Could you please, at some point in the future, just dictate, okay, this just grants you full self-driving, and then this option grants you robo-taxi access. Separate the two. Robo-taxi, sure, you can make that super expensive. Full self-driving, though, mm, I would say $10,000 for a software package is pretty insane, but probably gonna be nothing like it once it officially rolls out and people are using it. And there will be demand for it, and of course it took Tesla years and years of software engineering and testing to make it possible, and this is how they pay that back. I get it and everything, but when you tack on the fact that this car can potentially make you money, and that's why we we have to raise the price, you may end up losing people. If in the future, the price of full self-driving is fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, and that's the only way you can make your car drive itself, a lot of people are just never gonna do it, I think, even though their car is perfectly capable, and that's somewhat wasteful to me. That's kind of a shame. What do you guys think of the price of full self-driving? Is it already too much? I totally get that argument as well. Do you think they need to keep it at 7 k or lower it? There's no way they can ask more. Feel free to let me know down below. Thank you guys for watching today's video, and also, big thank you for getting us to 10,000 subscribers. Subscribers. I did not imagine that we would hit that milestone in less than three months given the first video I posted on this channel was on October 30th. That's amazing we grew this fast and I hope that the growth uh, just keeps on going. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have an excellent day. Take care.